loop ileostomy reversal prepared by Dr. Jetson Rodriguez and Dr. Justin Mako. Before the procedure, the surgeon must clearly understand the patient's anatomy and surgical history, especially if another surgeon performed the initial surgery. A contrast enema study and endoscopic evaluation are performed according to the indications of the initial surgery, and an 8 to 12 week period is recommended to consider the closure of a loop ileostomy. If the patient is scheduled to receive adjuvant chemotherapy, the stoma is conventionally left in place until the therapy is completed. The critical steps for this procedure are preparation of the entire abdomen in case of an unplanned laparotomy, circumferential incision at the mucocutaneous junction and deepening until subcutaneous fat is visible, dissection between the bowel serosal surface and the subcutaneous tissue, identification of the sheath and muscle of the anterior rectus and separation of the serosa, enter the abdomen and ensure that the intestinal loops move freely, inspection of the bowel for injuries, creation of the anastomosis and closure of the fascia and skin. Our patient is a 62-year-old female with history of low rectal cancer, status post chemo radiation, and laparoscopic low anterior resection with diverting loop ileostomy. During her pre-op workup, she underwent a contrast enema study and endoscopic confirmation of adequate healing of the anastomosis. She was subsequently scheduled for ileostomy reversal 11 weeks after the index surgery. We start our procedure by marking an elliptical circumferential incision around the stoma site. The insert shows a diagram representing the marking site around the ileostomy. The mucocutaneous junction is incised using cotton electrocautery. Alternatively, a scalpel can be used to make the circumferential incision. Then we take down our dissection until the subcutaneous fat is identified. Alice clamps are placed at the skin edges and used to retract the stoma and expose the interface between the serosal surfaces of the intestinal loops and the subcutaneous tissues. A circumferential dissection is performed and carried down until the anterior rectus teeth and muscle are identified, in this case with a fine tip snap and electrocautery, but it is also possible using med scissors. Care should be taken to avoid injury to the bowel serosal surface and stoma mesentery during dissection. Richardson or Army Navy retractors can facilitate exposure and visualization. At this point, the rectus muscle can be clearly distinguished from the bowel by the longitudinal orientation of the muscle fibers. Circumferential dissection continues until the abdomen is entered. Limited intraabdominal enterolysis is performed to enable adequate mobilization of the bowel loop for eventual anastomosis and facial closure. The ileostomy is excised with its ferro fatty tissue and a viable segment of ileum with intact serosa and adequate blood supply is prepared for the anastomosis. If the stoma is averted, careful adhesiolysis may be used to flip the averted bowel wall back into a normal configuration. Once the bowel is properly mobilized and inspected, a staple or hand suture closure is performed. In this case, we chose to resect the old ileostomy site and create a staple side-to-side -side functional end-to-end -end anastomosis. Mesenteric windows are created at the proximal afferent and distal efferent ilo limbs. The mesenterium is divided between hemostatic clamps and tied with two absorbable sutures. For a staple side-to-side -side anastomosis, the anti-mesenteric side of each iliac end is cut. A 75 gastrointestinal stapler is used to create the anastomosis. Care is taken to ensure the limbs are opposed along the anti-mesenteric surfaces prior to firing the stapler.
the stapler is fired and removed and Alice clamps are used to align the common enterotomy with the linear staple lines offset. The common enterotomy is closed with either suture or an intersecting fire of another gastrointestinal or transverse anastomosis type stapler, as shown in this case. The completed anastomosis may be oversawn at the discretion of the surgeon. A suture may be placed at the confluence of the bowel limbs using 3O absorbable sutures, the so called crutch stitch. The mesenteric defect is closed with a figure of 8 using a 3O absorbable suture. Next, the completed anastomosis is reduced to the abdomen. If needed, intraabdominal enterolysis must be completed before facial closure to avoid injury to the intestines adhering to the peritoneum. The anterior rectus sheath is identified at the medial and lateral side and lifted with cocker clamps. On some occasions, a limited subcutaneous dissection needs to be done to identify the facial borders. We irrigate and suction the abdominal cavity, looking for any evidence of bleeding or inadvertent bowel injury. The fascia is closed in an interrupted or running fashion using a slowly absorbable monofilament suture. In this case, we close the facial defect in three full thickness figure of eight stitches. Before tying the facial stitches, a final inspection can help prevent entrapment of intraabdominal contents in the sutures. The sutures are tied down in a slip knot and pushed down until the suture is tied. The subcutaneous tissue is irrigated before skin closure. Marcaine is used for local infiltration at the fascia and cutaneous levels. Several techniques have been described for skin closure after stomach reversal, including linear closure, burst strain, and closure over a suction drain. In our technique, the subcutaneous tissue is left unapproximated and the skin is closed transversely with interrupted 3O buried absorbable dermal sutures. The middle half centimeter of the wound is filled with telfowick and removed on the post of day number two. In this video, we demonstrate the critical steps for a loop ileostomy closure with staple anastomosis and linear skin closure.